Hi everyone, my name is Russell Dickinson. I'm a technical writer here at GitLab. Today, my presentation is about the importance of content consistency between docs content, API responses, and UI content. I use GitLab examples, but the principles can be applied to other products. By content, I mean the words that are available to the user. For example, text on buttons and pop-overs in the user interface. Regarding the API, it includes the API's responses. So who benefits from consistent content? Most importantly, users. Consistency makes it easier for them to use our product. It also makes life easier for designers and engineers. For example, if we agree on the standard label and case for a specific button, there's no need to think about its label every time we use that specific button. Standards and conventions help narrow down their choice of content. So if consistency is the aim, how do we achieve it? As I mentioned earlier, we set standards and conventions. For the GitLab UI, we use the GitLab design system, also known as pajamas. For the documentation, we use the documentation style guide. But it's not enough to set standards and conventions. They're only effective if we comply with them. At GitLab, we do that when a merge request is being reviewed. Subject matter experts check the merge request's content against our standards. At GitLab, we review content during two phases. During the design phase, the product designer and technical writer collaborate on the UI text. Other people are involved, but it's primarily their role. During the development and test phase, the engineers and technical writer collaborate on the documentation. Okay, so we've checked the UI content and we've checked the docs content. So surely when we put the two together, we get rainbows and unicorns, right? Usually yes, but on rare occasions, it's only when we put the two together that we find issues. Here I've got an example of where the combination of UI content and docs content is not what was expected. At the top here, we've got a modal named validate site. The user needs to complete three steps here, one of which requires them to do a task outside the GitLab UI. Each step has a numeric prefix, step one, step two, step three, to make it clear they must com be completed in order. The problem comes when the task is documented. Below the modal is an extract of the matching docs. And it wasn't until I wrote this docs content that I realized the steps numbering is a problem. In the task, we reference steps two and three of the modal by their prefix. But that's potentially confusing because the task steps are numbered. It may not be clear that when we mention step two, we're not referring to step two of the task, but step two as labeled in the UI. You can see how easily this could be confused. So what can we do to avoid this happening? The most important thing we can, we can do is consider UI content in the context of the documentation. Think ahead and ask, how might this look when it's to be documented? We can also make sure we're consistent in the terms we use across the UI, API responses, and docs. If we do these things, then we'll definitely improve consistency of content. Okay, that's it for me on the topic. Thank you for listening. Um, what inspired you to do your presentation on this topic? I'd had a few instances recently, um, particularly with uh, API content, uh, API responses, um, where the terminology that we used within the docs didn't match what we had in the API responses. So um, I thought, for example, if, if we've got someone completing a task in the user interface, and someone completing the same task using the API, they they see different terminology used within those 
those two different tasks. And I thought, well, that, that's not what we ought to have. We ought to be using the same terminology for both. Um, otherwise, they can't, you know, someone, for example, may become familiar with the task using the by using the UI and then say, okay, great, I also now want to, you know, semi-automate that task using the API. But if they already familiar with the, the user interface and then they switch to using the API, if the API uses different terminology, then they're going to get quite a sort of jarring effect in trying to go from one to the other. Um, the other one was the, the example that I gave within the presentation, um, which was one that, yeah, yep, that one, thank you, where um, effectively I collaborated with the product designer on the, the content in the modal, and it all looked perfect, all, looked, all made sense. Uh, but when it came to producing the documentation, that's when things, um, you know, or some problems arose. Um, and again, I covered that in the presentation. So that was another instance where I thought, um, you know, we've got content in UI, API responses, and the um, the docs themselves, and all three really need to be consistent. And yet, our review processes don't necessarily um, capture all three of those. Um, there are edge cases, like corner cases where, um, you know, our reviews don't um, don't uh, capture these sort of instances. So um, the intent was primarily to, to highlight uh, those incidents, uh, some of them at least, so that we could perhaps, you know, start the discussion as to how we might, um, you know, avoid this in, in future. So great. Um, so the example here, on the UI, we have step one, two, three, and then once we write the documentation, we mention it as step two and three. But the confusion that uh, Russell's kind of trying to highlight is, does this step two mean this step two, or does it mean step two of the docs? So this is something that we need to be mindful as product designers, that we're, when we're designing something that um, is very sequential like this, it might be a good time to think about how the documentation um, could be written out and then maybe working with your technical writer to kind of brainstorm some different ideas to potentially either change the UI, change the layout, or work with um, the technical writer to see how we might be able to document this in a clear and consistent way. So um, thank you for highlighting this problem, uh, Russell. And Sure, thank you.